Hello, good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining ST Microelectronics webinar. My name is Szymon Panecki. I'm here with my colleague Martin Hubik. Today, together, we will be glad to present you content of this webinar. During this online event, we will introduce you features and architecture of STM32 microcontrollers, which can significantly help to achieve low power consumption of application and to extend battery lifetime. As an example, we will use latest STM32 series from ultra low power category, which is STM32L5 based on ARM Cortex-M33 core. Here is an agenda that we prepared for today. We will start with overview of STM32L5 series with focus on its key elements related to low power. Then we will discuss about architecture of STM32L5, which is optimized in terms of performance and efficiency of computation. After the theoretical part, we will show you two demonstrations. First demonstration will be about performance, and it will be based on CoreMark benchmark. Second demonstration will also use CoreMark, but this time it will show you correlation between performance and low power. Later on, we will introduce you low power modes, which are available in STM32L5, with focus on consumption and wake-up time. Here again, theory will be followed by practice, and you will see a demonstration. At the end of the session, we will summarize the most important things that we discussed today, and we will be available to answer your questions. So let's get started now with first section titled STM32L5 Overview and Ultra Low Power Features. STM32L5 belongs to Ultra Low Power category. First product of this kind was STM32L1, which was introduced in 2009. Later on, Ultra Low Power category was extended with STM32L0, which happened in 2013. Another milestone was introduction of STM32L4 and STM32L4+. Plus. They were created in 2015 and 2016, respectively. Finally, STM32L5 was introduced to the market in 2019. So what is important to identify on this picture is that STM32L5 is a continuity of successful families like L0, L1, L4 and L4+. Plus. And it takes a huge benefit from experience of ST Microelectronics in the ultra low power field. Okay, so we know already that ultra low power portfolio of STM32 consists of five different series, and STM32L5 is the latest one. So now you might be wondering what is different or new in STM32L5 comparing to STM32L0, L1, L4, and L4. So here on this picture you can see a detailed comparison, but in fact the answer could be short and simple. So STM32L5 offers you higher performance, advanced security, and lower current consumption. All these uh, features, together with a new core, Cortex-M33, defines STM32L5 and makes it unique on the market. During this uh, webinar, we want to speak about ultra-low power, so as a starting point, let's try to define profile of typical uh, low-power application. At the very beginning, microcontroller has no power supply, which is typically a battery. So first phase we can simply call as off phase. Then power supply is applied and microcontroller starts to execute application. First part of the application is always related to configuration of resources like uh, clocks, GPIOs and peripherals. We can call this phase as uh, startup initialization. 
This phase typically takes place only once. Then we have part of application which is repetitive. It starts from inactive phase. Microcontroller doesn't need to perform here any tasks. So goal is to reduce consumption to minimum. In consequence, microcontroller stays in low power mode. Then microcontroller receives an interrupt. It might come from external world, for example, uh, from GPIO or communication interface. It might come as well from internal resources, for example, timer. Interrupt is a trigger to wake MCU up from low power mode. That is why this phase is called wake up. After waking up, microcontroller performs some tasks. For example, it could be uh, reading data from sensor. In consequence, this phase is an active phase. Once activity is finished, microcontroller comes back to low power mode and whole process starts again. In each of these application phases, microcontroller consumes current. So after taking into account all of phases, it is possible to calculate average current consumption of application. Once we are familiar with profile of typical low power application, let's try to identify a list of requirements for ultra low power microcontroller. And let's speak about solutions of STM32L5, which addresses them. First requirement for microcontroller is computational performance. This feature is needed because it allows to execute faster tasks in active phase of application and to reduce the amount of time spent in it. In order to address this requirement, STM32L5 offers performant Cortex-M33 core, system frequency up to 110 MHz, and so-called ART accelerator, a cache memory which reduces number of flash weight states. Second requirement for microcontroller is power efficiency. This feature is desired because it helps to reduce the current consumption in active phase of application. STM32L5 is equipped with internal SMPS, which can significantly reduce the consumption. In addition, scaling of voltage and gating of clocks that supply and feed resources of STM32L5 could further reduce the consumption in active phase. Third requirement for microcontroller is set of low power modes. They help to achieve low current consumption in inactive phase of application. Here, STM32L5 offers multiple low power modes, starting from sleep mode up to very deep low power modes like standby and shutdown. We will take a deeper look on these modes later on. Another microcontroller requirement is short wake-up time. It helps to reduce the transition period between inactive and active phase of application. Depending on the low power mode, STM32L5 can offer wake-up time even down to six clock cycles. Finally, last requirement for microcontroller is set of smart peripherals. Typically, they can help to reduce consumption by offloading CPU and by extending inactive phase of application. Here, STM32L5 offers a wide range of smart low-power peripherals. Among them, we can find Watchdog for ADC, Low Power UART, Low Power Timer, DMA or PKA. As a summary of this slide, we can say that STM32L5 offers effective solutions to address all requirements of ultra-low power microcontroller. And it can definitely help to optimize each phase of low power application. With this sentence, I finish this section and I let my colleague Martin to continue. Thank you, Simon. In this section, we will have a close look at performance and efficiency of computation on STM32L5. One of the key factors that affect performance, but also power efficiency of a microcontroller is the system level architecture. 
Most applications run their code from either internal flash or an external one, and they sometimes place the very critical code into SRAM. But it's often the flash that limits the performance at higher frequencies. However, this was largely mitigated on STM32L5 thanks to low number of flash wait states in the first place, and also due to the cache that resides between the Cortex core and the memories. So what you see in the picture are the four bus masters on the, on the chip, which are the Cortex core and the, th the three DMA controllers. On the right, you see the slaves, which are the internal flash and SRAMs, all the peripherals and also the external memories. The cache resides between the core above the bus metrics and it caches instructions and data to internal memories and when remapped even to external memories. When the instructions and data are inside the cache, they can be accessed at zero wait states, even at the maximum frequency of 110 megahertz. This not only affects the performance, but also the power efficiency. And that's for two reasons. Uh, firstly, the code executes faster, so the application can spend more time in one of the various low power modes. Secondly, the access to the cache is in fact more power efficient than accessing the original memory. There are many ways to measure computational performance of an MCU. One way to do this is to simply state the core frequency or number of instructions that are executed each second. Drystone benchmark was one of the first that tried to tie performance with the real code. But today, the industry standard is CoreMark from the embassy. Their source code is freely available and can be ported virtually on any architecture. The code is using algorithms and data manipulations that can be found in common real applications, such as uh, list processing, metrics manipulation, or state machines that are based on if or switch statements. The outcome of the core mark is a single number that represents number of core mark iterations executed each second. You can also encounter core mark score per megahertz, which defines the computational efficiency. The core mark score is influenced by the core itself. In case of STM32 L5, this is the Cortex M33. The score increases with frequency, but this relationship is not necessarily linear, especially when the code is executed from flash. However, on L5, this is the case. The relationship is linear, and that's thanks to the low number of wait states for the flash and the cache that accelerates code execution. It's also worth mentioning that every core mark measurement should be accompanied by the exact version of compiler that was used and also the optimization flags. The core mark code is designed in a way that it prevents any elimination of code at compile time. So all the computation is actually performed at runtime. In the graph, you see the dependency of core mark score on the frequency of the core for STM32L5 and one of our competitor that is also based on Cortex M33. In both cases, the code is executed from internal flash. At low frequency, the performance is almost the same, but at higher frequencies, the flash weight states and the lack of cache start to limit our competitor. L5 reaches similar performance at 80 megahertz, where the other device needs to run at 150. And this has significant implications for the consumption because the same amount of computational work can be done at lower frequency and therefore at much lower consumption. The core mark can also be executed from SRAM, which is always zero weight states at all frequencies. So you might encounter very different results for code executed from flash and SRAM, and it's something to be aware of. So how can we evaluate power efficiency of computation? What's often used for this purpose is microamps per megahertz 
In other words, how much current is consumed at a given core frequency. And there are two issues with this. First of all, megahertz is a poor metric for performance because performance depends on many other factors apart from frequency, such as the flash and cache design. Second of all, as you'll see later, STM32L5 includes an internal SMPS. So unit of energy instead of current provide better and more accurate description than just current at certain VDD voltage. The better way to compare two products is to measure the energy that is required to compute certain tasks, for example, one core mark iteration. In fact, Embassy provide a standardized method to measure the consumption while running the core mark. So the ULP mark dash CM is the inverse of the energy required per one core mark iteration. The inverse is taken just because we intuitively expect that the higher value expresses better performance. To compare two products, we should always uh, make sure uh, that we compare at the same level of performance and not just at the same frequency. The STM32L5 integrates an internal SMPS which is an optional feature available on specific part numbers. From the barrel of material point of view, it requires only few passive components, one inductor and two capacitors. SMPS greatly improves the power efficiency, especially at high VDD voltage. The SMPS is configurable at runtime, so when the MCU enters one of the deeper low power modes, in fact, stop one or deeper, the SMPS is automatically switched off and it's re-enabled once the MC wakes up. The SMPS supplies the internal LDO that in turn supplies the whole digital domain, the CPU, digital peripherals and memories. So this is the end of the theory part, so let's now move to the practical demonstration. In this part I'll execute core mark on STM32L5. The code will be placed in flash and I'll run the test at two various frequencies to confirm that the core mark score is in fact linear with frequency. I'm going to use STM32L5 discovery kit that has the version of L5 with the integrated SMPS. On the board you'll also find ST-Link V3, a power shield to do power consumption measurement, and various other components such as external memories, Bluetooth module, etc. To display some runtime messages during the core mark execution, we will use uh, the virtual COM port of the ST-Link. And in the next hands-on, we'll also use the cube monitor power to measure the consumption during the execution of core mark. So the USB cable is now plugged into the ST-Link. Uh, we can connect to the target and flash the two binaries. So I have pre-compiled uh, one binary uh, for core mark running at 110 megahertz and a second one running at 24. ST-Link enumerates also as a mass storage. So the easiest way to flash, flash a binary is simply drag and drop it to the ST-Link mass storage. So in just a moment, uh, you see the binary was flashed and the core mark is immediately executed. If I press the reset, it will start from the beginning. So the core mark needs to run for at least 10 seconds to get valid uh, result. So let's wait a bit. Okay, and here we go. Uh, you see the code ran for 11 seconds, which is fine. It ran 5000 iterations. So the core mark score is 443 iterations per second. I used uh, armclank v6.14 as a compiler and set the flags to optimize for speed. The code is of course running from flash and uh, at the very bottom we see the confirmation of the frequency uh, which is 110 megahertz. So let's now run the second binary I will just flash it in. Again, we need to wait at least 10 seconds to get a valid, valid result. 
And here we go. The core mark score is 98.3 iterations per second. So if we divide uh, the core mark score with the frequency, we get approximately uh, four for both cases, which is a proof that the relationship is in fact linear. Here you see another comparison of STM32L5 with one of our competitor that is also based on Cortex-M33. To make this comparison fair, we are using the same compiler and the same compiler flags. This is also the reason why the result for 110 MHz is few percent less than in the demonstration that we have just did with ARM CLANG. L5 scores at 80 MHz just few points less than the other device at 150. So to summarize, the system level architecture of a chip is extremely important factor that affects not only the performance, but also power efficiency, as you will see in the next demonstration. So now we will measure the consumption while running the core mark. I will run the core mark at 24 megahertz because this is the sweet spot of the microcontroller where it performs best in terms of computational workload per unit of energy. And we'll also try to measure uh, the consumed energy per one core mark iterations. And we'll do that thanks to the integrated power shield on the discovery board and QPonitor power running on a PC. You might be already aware of standalone power shield, which is an SG board that works as a power supply that also measures the current consumption dynamically. Now the power shield was integrated on the STM32L5 discovery, so we do not need any external components. The supply voltage can range from 1.8 to 3.3 volts. The measurement has a huge dynamic range from 300 nanoamps up to 150 milliamps, and it measures with sampling rate of 100 kilohertz. So now I plugged in uh, another USB cable to the power shield. I also changed uh, the jumper here uh, to supply the target of the STM32L5 from the power shield. And I also put uh, the switch into the measure mode. So now I can go to Cube Monitor Power and uh, connect. I see the configuration tab um, here. I can set the sampling rate. So let, let's put it to the maximum, uh, 100 kilohertz. I set the acquisition time to infinity. So it will keep measuring until I press uh, a stop button. And let's supply the target uh, with uh, three volts uh, voltage. So once I press uh, the start acquisition, uh, the target will be supplied and uh, the microcontroller will start to execute. We still have uh, the binary um, with the core mark uh, running at 24 megahertz. So let me, let me start the acquisition. You see there was a short current peak to charge the decoupling capacitors that is now offsetting the y-axis. So let me stop the acquisition and start again. So you see uh, the core, core mark finished just, uh, just after uh, I started the acquisition. So now the consumption is about uh, half a milliamp. Uh, if I press the reset button and release, it will start to execute core mark and after about 11 seconds uh, it will finish it will reconfigure the clock to uh, 4 megahertz and that's why you see this sharp uh, drop in consumption so now what we can do is to show uh, all the measurements and you clearly see uh, this portion of, of the graph that uh, that is the microcontroller executing uh, core mark. So what I can do, I can zoom in uh, just approximately into this interval.
And I see here in the selected time frame, uh, there was six, 61 millijoules uh, consumed during this time. And we also know uh, from the traces that uh, the microcontroller executed 1,100 iterations of CoreMark. So from that, we can uh, calculate the energy required per one CoreMark iteration or its inverse, which is in fact the ULP Mark CM score. If we plug in the numbers, we get a ULP Mark CM score of about 18, which is close enough to what we publish at the embassy website. Of course, the accuracy of this measurement depends on how closely we can zoom in into the uh, actual uh, core mark execution. So this is only an approximate result. Here is another comparison of STM32L5 and one of our competitor that is also based on Cortex-M33. The conditions are the same. Um, both microcontrollers are executing 1,500 iterations of core mark. The VDD voltage is three volts and the code runs from flash. L5 runs at 80 megahertz and the other device at 150. And as you remember from before, they have the same performance level at those frequencies. From the ULP Mark CM score, it turns out that L5 is 16.9% more efficient. I will now hand over to Simon. Thank you, Martin. Uh, let me continue with the next section, which is related to STM32L5 low power modes. As already mentioned before, STM32L5 has a wide range of operating modes. On this picture, you can see their overview and comparison. Starting from the top, there is a run mode. We can notice that for maximum system frequency, which is 110 MHz, consumption is on the level of 11 mA. Of course, it is possible to use so-called clock gating and reduce system clock. For 80 MHz and 26 MHz, consumption is 7 mA and below 2 mA, respectively. In case of significant uh, system clock reduction, for example to 2 MHz, it is possible to use low power run mode. In such case, consumption is on the level of 320 microamps. In sleep mode, core is stopped, while the rest of resources can be active, including clock domain. By keeping the same system frequency as previously, so 2 MHz, consumption is reduced to 230 microamps and wake-up time is very fast. Then we have three stop modes. In these modes, both core and peripherals are stopped. These are typical low-power modes where a microcontroller is waiting for an interrupt to wake up and to resume the application. Depending on type of stop mode, consumption is different, wake-up time is also different, and additionally, number of wake-up sources is different. The lowest current consumption can be achieved by using standby, shutdown, and VBAT modes, down to few nanoamps. However, we need to consider limited number of wake-up sources and longer wake-up time. STM32L5 offers a variety of low power modes and it gives you a flexibility to select the most suitable one for your application. When deciding about low power mode, there are some parameters to consider, like average consumption, peak current, performance and reaction time. For example, standby mode fits to the profile where average consumption has to be very low, reaction time doesn't need to be quick, and time between wake-up cycles can be long. On the other hand side, low power sleep could be a good idea for a profile where reaction time has to be quick and there is a short period between wake-up cycles. A good trade-off between low average current consumption and short reaction time is stop to mode. 
STM32L5 is clearly an ultra-low-power microcontroller family. So important to highlight is that among different microcontroller families with ARM Cortex-M33 available on the market, STM32L5 will give you best-in-class ultra-low-power capabilities. In terms of low-power modes, here you can see a comparison between STM32L5 and other device based on the same core. If we compare stop mode, standby mode and shutdown mode with their equivalents from competition, we can notice a huge difference. Both in terms of consumption and wake-up time, STM32L5 is multiple times better than competitor. Ok, so this is the end of this section, so I hand over again to Martin. Thank you, Simon. In this last demonstration, I would like to show you a typical example of low-power application. The firmware will perform ADC acquisition with 1 kHz rate. When the sample acquisition is finished, the microcontroller will enter stop 2, which means that all high-speed clocks are turned off and internally the chip is supplied from the low-power LDO. After wake-up, just before the next sample acquisition takes place, the microcontroller will continue executing exactly at the point where it left before. The content of the memory and the state of the processor is retained in stop 2. I will also measure the consumption again thanks to the cube monitor power and the power shield. The purpose of this demonstration is to show the importance of the wake up time and the consumption in low power mode, in this case, stop 2. In this picture, you can see the transition table between various low power modes on STM32L5. For this particular example, we're going to use run mode at 4 MHz to take the sample and then enter stop 2 once it's finished. Let's now have a look at a consumption profile for one ADC sample acquisition. When the STM32L5 is in stop 2, the consumption is just a few microamps. When it wakes up and the core starts to execute at 4 MHz, the consumption is at a level of hundreds of microamps, so it's very important that the active phase is as short as possible. To wake up from stop 2, it takes approximately 5 microseconds. To start the ADC acquisition, to store the value and clear the wake-up flags, take less than 30 microseconds. So the rest of the 1 millisecond window, which is the acquisition rate of this application, can be spent in stop 2. To achieve low power consumption, it's necessary to have low duty cycle between the active and inactive phase. Having a short wake-up time is absolutely essential to achieve this goal. So now I will flash the test binary, again by drag and dropping to the ST-Link mass storage. I will connect to the power shield. Uh, let's set the sampling frequency again to the maximum, 100 kilohertz. And let's set the acquisition time for 100 millisecond. So what we should see is a consumption profile during 100, exactly 100 uh, sample acquisition and let's supply the target with 3 volts. Again, I will start the acquisition for the second time. And here what we see is, is the periodic pattern uh, during the ADC acquisition. What we don't see is the sharp transition between uh, stop to and run mode but that's only because we are because we are measuring on a shunt uh, resistor close to the power supply. So the waveform is sort of low pass filtered. Nevertheless, the average current consumption is correct. The microcontroller consumes 47 microamps in this particular application. So this is all from me. And for the last time, I will hand over to Simon. Thank you, Martin. So this was the last uh, section of our webinar. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching it. 
Before we finish, let me provide you a short summary of the things that we discussed uh, today. STM32L5 is a continuity of successful ultra-low power STM32 families like L0, L1, L4 and L4+. Thanks to this fact, STM32L5 has multiple solutions which address all phases of ultra-low power application. High computation performance and power efficiency reduce both time and consumption of active phase. Low power modes reduce consumption of inactive phase. Short wake-up time reduces inactive to active transition phase. Finally, smart low power peripherals offload CPU and extend period of inactive phase. In consequence, we are very confident to say that STM32L5 is best-in-class, ultra-low-power, Cortex-M33-based microcontroller family. Last information which we would like to share with you are references. STMicroelectronics created application nodes which are focusing on STM32 and ultra-low-power. If you are interested to know more about topics that we discussed today, we encourage you to check the documents mentioned on the slide. Thank you.